Five true 911 calls, all real stories. Two ordinary families' lives are turned upside down when their sons turn on their parents, a terrifying home invasion, and a six-year-old is hailed a hero. If you keep coming back to watch these disturbing stories, hit the subscribe button. Our recent stats have shown that only 20% of our true 911 family have joined officially. So if that's you, you know what to do. In July 2010, an Upper West Side sushi chef brutally murdered his father by slashing his throat at the dinner table, nearly decapitating him, and then slitting his own wrists before calmly contacting 911. 911 operated 1966 emergency. I just killed my father and I cut my own wrist. You, you, what, what, do you use a weapon on your father? Knife. And you're injured as well? Yes. Let me connect with the EMS. 8791. Yeah, I right, just 8, killed 7, my 9, father. 8791. He's stating that he just slit his wrist and killed his father. I have um, um, the call on the line. He said he slit his wrist and uh, killed his father? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, sir? Yeah? Well, how old are you? 33. 33 years old? Yep. Okay, and you're bleeding from the wrist? Yep. And your father, is your father, uh, how, is your father breathing? No. Your father is, he's, he's dead? Yeah, I think so. Oh, uh, you cut, you, you, you stabbed, you stabbed your father? I stabbed his throat. Uh -huh. Sorry? Is that what I you did? his throat. Okay. Cut wrist and you're bleeding. Yep. Okay, what I want you to do is get a cloth and apply it to the wound where you're bleeding to control the bleeding. Sit down. Okay. Uh, uh, sir, sir, do you have a psych history, a psychological history? Yes. Okay. Do you have any weapons there? No, there's a knife on the floor. I'm not using it. Okay, sir. Uh, well, the EMS will be there as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Faro. Sir, how old are you? Thirty-three. And your father was? Like seventy-three. And he's not moving. He's no. An ordinary family dinner turned into a horror scene when 33-year-old Julian Corita, a former sushi sous chef at Credit Suisse, sliced his father's throat with a fish knife, nearly decapitating him just as he was about to eat his spaghetti inside the family apartment on 87th Street. Fumitaka Frank Corita was an experienced choreographer, often traveling to fulfill the needs of his career. However, about three years before his murder, he moved back home full-time to help his wife tend to their mentally ill son. In the 911 call made by Julian, he shockingly stated that his father was trying to get everybody in the world to beat him up and torture him. Julian also reported to authorities that his 70-year-old father used to sexually and physically abuse him when he was a child. According to police reports, the University of Wisconsin-Madison graduate began to display strange and hostile behavior. It was allegedly often consumed with resentful narratives that only he believed and understood. He had called his mother Valerie multiple times with stories of what he thought was a significantly troubled childhood. And in his senior year, he suffered a psychotic break. He was admitted to St. Vincent's Hospital in Lower Manhattan for treatment. At first, the psychiatrists that saw him believed that he was suffering from schizoaffective disorder, a mental illness that makes the patient suffer from symptoms of both schizophrenia and a mood disorder like depression or bipolar. He was eventually diagnosed as schizophrenic and prescribed antipsychotic medication. Julian was prescribed Clozaril, a highly effective and strong drug used to treat more unmanageable schizophrenic cases. Julian had admitted to authorities that he had stopped taking his medication prior to the attack as he was having problems with his insurance. He was accused of second-degree murder in his father's death, but made an insanity plea. His defense saying that he was not on his medication and did not know or understand that his actions were wrong due to his mental illness. During her son's trial, Valerie Carita begged the court to take the severity of his mental illness and his decade-long battles with schizophrenia into consideration, in the hopes that he would rather be admitted into a psychiatric facility. 
Here, they could help prevent him from slipping back into his nightmare beliefs and theories, like the one that ended her husband's life. However, in 2012, a jury did not believe these claims. It rather took the prosecutor's side, Assistant District Attorney Joan Aluzi Orban, who argued that he was well aware of his actions and had engaged in a twisted Oedipal glory to win the affections and attention of his mother. He figured in two or three months, he's out of the hospital, dad's out of the way, and it's back to me and mom. Julian Carita was found guilty of second degree murder and was sentenced to 15 years to life in prison. In July 2015, two distressed Tennessee sisters hid from two burglars in a tiny bathroom cabinet as they called 911 and begged them to hurry and save them. At one point, one of the intruders locked himself in the same bathroom to dodge the cops. Um, there's two men outside my house. I think they're trying to break in. They must have come home alone. Okay, stay on the line with me. I'm getting help started to you, okay? Okay. Can you see um, what they look like? They were knocking on the door. One had long hair, kind of, and I don't, I'm not sure about the other one. Okay, was, were they white, black, or Hispanic? Um, I think they're white. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and where are you? <laughs> we're in my parents' bathroom. Where, where are you inside the house? Um, we're in the very back with my, in my parents' bedroom bathroom. Please hurry. Okay, I'm getting them started, okay? Okay, what door are they at? The very back. It's a, it's a smaller house. Okay, so, so the two men are at the back door? Yeah. Okay. I have the call set up. We do have officers that are en route to you, okay? Um, is it possible for you to close the door that you're in? Yes, it is closed. Okay. Is it a lock on that door? It doesn't close all the way. Okay. Okay. How old are you and your sister? I'm, I'm 16 and she's 13. Okay. I, I, don't know I, I have I have help on the way, okay? Um if you can hear anything, let me know, okay? If it sounds like they got in, let me know. Okay. I want you to be quiet, okay? If they do get in, don't make any noise, okay? I want you to be quiet. Don't hang up the phone, okay? Just leave the phone where I can hear, okay? Okay, okay, okay. And at any point if it sounds like they made entry into the house. Let me know, okay? Okay. Yeah, a car. You can hear a car? They, they have a car. What color is the car? I'm not sure. It's loud. Okay, is the car in your driveway? They're loud. They're in the house? Are they in the house? Okay. I want you to be very quiet, okay? I'm on the line with you. I have help on the way. Okay, I have help on the way. They're on the way. They are coming to you. They're getting closer. They're getting closer to the bathroom? Are they are they getting closer to the bathroom where you are? Yeah. Okay. I'm updating that information for our officers, okay? They're on the way to you. Okay, I have an officer that's close by, okay? He he's outside. He's he's coming to you, okay? Just stay where you are, okay? Until I let you know that it's okay to come out. Okay, I want you to stay put, okay? I don't want you to come out yet, okay? Stay put. Okay, stay stay put. I don't want you to come out, okay? Stay put. Okay, he, he tried to lock himself. 
he's trying to lock himself in. Okay, I still want you to be very quiet. Can you tell where in the house he is? Can you tell where inside the house he is? No, no. Why do we know to be somehow? Okay, I just want you to stay put for right now, okay? Don't come out. Don't don't make any loud noises, okay? Be as quiet as possible. Okay. Okay. We have the police that are outside. They're getting one in, in custody. Okay, but I just need for you to keep as quiet as possible, okay? Can you tell if he's in the living room or in a bedroom? No, it's too far You can't tell? No, I can't. Can the police come inside? Okay. Um, they know that you're still hiding in the bathroom, okay? I just want you to keep as quiet as possible. Do you know which room he, he went in? No, I don't know. Okay. Where is he? Don't don't come out yet. Okay. Um I have officers who are clearing your house, okay? I want you to still remain quiet until they come in there with you, okay? Don't don't be afraid. Okay. We're here. We're back here. The 16 and 13 year old Nashville sisters were home alone when just after 9 a.m. they heard two men trying to break in through the back door. The girls hurried to their parents' bathroom, where they hid and contacted 911 for help. As police arrived at the home, one of the intruders tried to dodge the authorities by hiding in the same bathroom the two girls were hiding in, locking himself in. Police managed to arrest the burglars, 31-year-old Brian Tomberland, who at first tried to drive away and was located by a police dog in the woods near the home shortly after. They also arrested 29-year-old Carlos Murillo, who attempted an escape on foot but was quickly apprehended, and police charged them both with burglary. Murillo was also charged with aggravated burglary as well as possession of burglary tools. At the same time, Tomberlin faced the same charges but was also charged with felony evading arrest as well as driving on a revoked license. Authorities found stolen cash, jewelry, a shotgun, musical instruments, and a computer that they had taken from the Nashville home in their getaway vehicle. The girls were commended for their quick thinking and involvement in helping the police catch the two criminals. You never think this is actually going to happen to you, the older sister said in an interview. I'm most glad that I could help, you know, capture two guys that could have done worse. Cynthia Loya called 911 in January 2017 when her 23-year-old son, Sean Ryan, threatened to kill her with razor blades. And he had also threatened to slit his own throat if she called the police. Her son, a transgender man, was then fatally shot by a Sharon police officer. 911, where is your emergency? Hello? 911, can I help you? Yes, I need the police at my house at... Kaplan, T A M P L I N Sharon. Okay, what's going on there? My son's trying to kill me. Does he have any weapons? Yes, he had a 
uh, razor blades in my neck, and he tried to get me to take him to the store and take all my money. Okay, where is he at right now? He's at the. He's he's in my gas. He's in my garage, and I'm driving around. I'm supposed to pick him up. He's got the knife on him. Okay. He's got okay. to call the police. He's gonna slit his throat. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna transfer to Mercer. This is Ohio. Don't hang up the phone. Okay, I gotta do this quick. Don't go back to that house. He has a gun because I have weapons in the house and I don't know if he took one or not. I'm trying to start. Murder, Trumbull with a transfer. Sharon? Hi, this is Mercer Trumbull. She's she saying her son's trying to kill her. He came over, had a razor blade to her neck, wanting all her money. She's driving around right now. Um, her son's still at the residence. Ma'am, go ahead with Mercer. Hello? Okay, he's, he's outside by the... Uh, garage waiting for me. He has a razor blade. He said the police shows he's going to th slit his throat. I have weapons in the house. I don't know if he has them on him or not. Okay, honey. Now, I need you to stay on the line with me because I have some questions that around slowly and meet you at the uh, at, at my garage. Okay, ma'am. Now, what's your phone number? And what is your your first and last name? Cynthia Loya. L O Y A. Huh? Honey, what is your son's name? His name is Sean Hake. Sean Hake? Hake. H A K E. Okay. And uh, what does he look like? White, black, Hispanic, or Asian? He's white. He's he's a she. He's in transition. Transgender. Okay, honey, just one second. Well, he looks like a guy. He's wearing brown coat, brown uh, beanie, brown pants. Police responded to the domestic assault call, and although details were not released until two years later, it was confirmed that Sean Ryan was killed in an officer-involved shooting at the home on Tamplin Street about 11.50 p.m. The media was heavily criticized for the misuse of pronouns as the case went public. According to friends of the shooting victim, Sean Ryan Hake had been transitioning from a woman to a man and wished to be called Sean Ryan. Authorities reported that Sean Ryan had previously had some run-ins with the law, his most recent violation of order occurring in 2016. Police said that not much information would be released until the investigation was closed. They did not reveal much about the details of the incident, but claimed that the situation had escalated and ended with Sean Ryan being fatally shot. The three Sharon officers involved in the shooting were placed on administrative leave. In 2019, in a press conference held outside the Mercer County Courthouse, Mercer County District Attorney Miles Carson Jr. announced that no charges would be made against the officers involved as the shooting was reportedly justified. According to Carson Jr., Hake allegedly refused multiple orders from the officers to put down the utility knife he was holding that he had already used on his wrist. According to authorities, Hake had escalated the situation by threatening that police would have to kill him or he would kill them. Carson Jr. stated that Hake did not obey the orders, but rather made his way towards the three officers with the knife still in hand. Officer 3 shot Hake twice. The suspect continued to advance with a knife. The officer fired a third shot, which stopped Hake. Close friends and relatives of Sean Ryan Hake continued to question whether deadly force was actually necessary. The American Civil Liberties Union has since demanded that law enforcement officials commit to full transparency and accountability in this case, adding, this must include the release of all relevant information including but not limited to any existing video recordings, audio recordings, and the name of the officer who felt compelled to shoot Sean. Authorities have yet to release the names of the officers involved. The last thing being said was that they were still on administrative leave. It is not believed that the victim's gender was related to the shooting. In December 2019, Alec Butt attacked his ex-wife, Anna Butt, slashing her face with a hammer and a screwdriver in Clifton. 
It is believed that his harrowing act was punishment for her leaving him. Someone's being attacked behind my showroom. I'm on White Ladies Road. White Ladies Road? What's happening there? Somebody's screaming behind my showroom. I think someone's being attacked. Okay. Just, are you okay? Oh my god! What's going on? There's a, someone's being attacked! Okay, can you tell me what's going on, please? Can you tell me what's going on? There's a, there's a man attacking, attacking a lady. Okay, so what is going on? Is anybody injured? Pardon? Is anybody injured? No, they're being attacked. I'm watching him hit her. Okay, I just need to understand. Are there any weapons involved? I, I think so. Exactly He's oh my on. god! Okay, can you, yeah, I'm trying to get someone there, but I need to know exactly what's going on. Can you tell someone, me exactly a man is attacking a woman quite violently what behind my showroom. What are you attacking her with? I don't know. It's quite dark. He's pushing and punching and saying, can I get, a, can I get, I can't want this. We're no, having the police to, on their way. I need to on the phone. I need a description. Can you tell he's me? He's wearing a hoodie. He's dragging the woman. It's his ex, her ex-husband. He's going mad. He's, he's ripping her face to shreds. He's not screaming. I think he's got a knife. He's smashing her in the face. I can just, I'm just, okay. he's really hurting her. Can I go and intervene or not? Okay, no, don't intervene, no. Keep safe. I'm going to get one of my colleagues to bring ambulance. Uh, we'll be a second. He's put a hoodie up. He's wearing... Six go six into my showroom. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! She's, you need, need to an ambulance immediately. Alec and Anna Budd had been married for 18 years. And in 2018, Mrs. Budd had reported to police a real fear he might assault her and had reportedly taken many measures to avoid any attacks at her home. Later in court proceedings, it was said that Mr. Butt had brooded in an unfurnished home, fueled by anger and resentment, and was envious of Anna's new relationship with a man he had described as the odd job man. The 71-year-old businessman had attempted to conceal his face with a hoodie and a mask, but witnesses recognized the man as he brutally attacked his wife. He reportedly crept up on her from behind the bins in the car park outside her workplace on White Ladies Road. Shortly after 5 p.m., he jumped her and proceeded to hit her head against the wall and floor as well as smash her face multiple times with a hammer and a screwdriver. The attack did not stop until Alec heard a witness calling the police and ran away. He reportedly fled from the scene before police arrived, but was located 90 minutes later sitting in a car in a park near Cribs Causeway. Alec allegedly denied being involved in the attack on his ex-wife, but he was arrested for the crime. He was, however, bailed out following the offense and permitted to visit the greater Bristol area. There was an explicit exclusion zone surrounding Mr. Butt's home. Mrs. Butt was rushed to a nearby hospital where she was treated for her injuries. In the victim's statement, Anna said that she had been terrified in the attack and believed that she would die in that car park. She also mentioned that it was hard for her to tell her children what their father had done to their mother and why she needed to keep herself and her children away from him as the case continued. The trial was postponed to March 2021 due to the global coronavirus pandemic. Alec Butt was sentenced to seven years in prison for his violent assault and for causing grievous bodily harm. Anna made a full physical recovery, but has bravely spoken out about how the attack has taken a toll on her own mental health and that of her family. There are days when my anxiety is so high that I can't face leaving the house. She also urged people suffering from domestic abuse and violence to contact authorities and get the help that they need. In September 2013, Daddy's little hero, 11-year-old Lily Talbot, calmly called triple zero and told him that her dad had been knocked unconscious by a rearing horse and that he was bleeding from the head. Ambulance emergency, what town or suburb? Um, my daddy just fell over and he's yeah, what, bleeding. What and suburb daddy... are you in? Um, I'm in Carrigon. Okay, so an old man's fallen over? He's fallen over, he's unconscious and he's bleeding from the head. And so okay, how old are you? I'm 11. Okay, is there any adults there with you? No, Molly's right. trying to get Molly from the fire. 
my sister. Oh, okay. And you're home by yourself? With my daddy. Yeah, oh, he right. just fell over. Wait, who fell over? Your dad? My daddy, and he's bleeding from the head. How old's your dad? Um, he's 50. So. Okay, all right. Is, is he awake now? No, daddy. Yeah, he's, he just woke up. Is he talking to you, honey? No. Daddy. Okay, listen, is he breathing? Yeah. Okay, all right. How far did he fall? He fell from the ground onto concrete. Okay. Do you know why he fell? Do you know yes, what caused? Yes, the horse pulled back and... The what, my, darling? My that, my mum's horse pulled back and he catapulted, he, he catapulted and... He okay, ran. did he, did he, did the horse hit him? Yeah, and he fell over and he, I think he cracked his head. Okay. So, where, what part of the horse hit him? I think the front of him. In the so, front? Okay. Where's your horse now? He's tied up still. Good yeah. girl. All right. Now, is there any serious bleeding? Yes. Yep. He's okay. head and he's... All right. Is he completely alert now? He's awake. Is yeah. he talking to you like I'm talking to you? Are you talking? Can you talk? Can you Not talk? Not really? Uh, kind of. Sounds a little bit funny, doesn't yeah, he? Can you... Okay, listen. Now, the ambulance is being organised, okay? Yes. Now, is there a lot of bleeding from his head? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. What's it's your name? Trying, he's trying to get up. Tell him to stay still. Dad, stay still. You tell him the ambulance said stay the still. The ambulance is coming. Okay, what's your name, darling? Lily. Lily. Yes. All right. Now, where? Is it a big property? Um, yes. It's 10 acres. All right. Now, what I want you to do is turn the lights on in the house. Can you do that in, for me? In the stables. Oh, okay. In some concrete. All right. Now, I'm going to stay on the phone with you. Okay. Yeah. The ambulance Dad is on its still. way. Tell Daddy to stay nice and still. Stay still. Now, stay have you got a cloth near you? I've got towels. Good girl. Just put that on his head and yeah, apply okay. firm pressure. Okay. Just put it under your head. Yep. You're doing a fantastic job. Just stay on the phone. Yep, sure. You tell Daddy to stay nice and still. Don't let him eat or drink anything. No, okay, Lily, we're coming. My name's Wendy. I'm going to. Hi, honey. I'm going to stay on the phone with you. Okay. All right. Now, where's Mum gone? Which she's over at Windsor trying to get Molly. How old's Molly? Um, she's only eight. She's thirteen. Okay. Do you need to open the gate so the ambulance can come in? Sure. Come in. Hello. Yeah. Hi, Lily. Hi. You've done that. Yeah, I got my neighbour too. Oh, good girl. She's going to talk to you now. Oh, good. But tell him not to move. All right. Okay. Now, have you got some pressure on the bleeding? Because we need to control the bleeding from his head, honey. Thank you. Starting to stop bleeding. Oh, good. So, was he putting your horse away? Lily? Yeah? Was he putting your horse away, was he? No, um, it just. Uh, um, sorry, just try to pull, pull back again. Did someone something to frighten him? Yeah. What's your horse's name? Arnie. Arnie. Okay, <laughs> is he talking now, honey? Yeah, he's talking a bit. Does bleeding. he know what happened? Um, he fell back and he's bleeding from this ear. Is he bleeding from inside the ear? Um, yes. Yeah. Yes? Um. Tell him to stay, stay still. Yep. Dad, stay still. Take a deep breath. Yeah. I bet it scared you. Yeah. I yeah. Dad to scream and cry. Yeah. But I was about to... I thought I was going to ring my mum, but I thought this would be better. You've done a terrific job, Lily. It's the first thing you do. You ring triple zero yep. so we can get help coming to you. Yep. Okay. Is he only bleeding from the one side of the ear or both? I think so. That's what he fell onto and he started to grip his arm. But I think he's moving it. But... You're doing a terrific job for your dad. You just keep reassuring him that we're coming, yep. okay? okay? And to can to stay really still. Nice and still. Right. Good girl. Can you get your neighbour yeah, to put the, the car next to the gate that's open with the hazard lights on? That makes it easier to find you. Right. Can you ask him to do that for me? Sure. Thanks, darling. Great. Good girl, Lily. Yeah, he's just going to... Yeah, he's back on to do it. Good, now. good, good job. You're doing a terrific job for Dad. You just keep reassuring him we're coming. The ambulance is coming to help you, Dad. Good girl. You tell him to stay nice and still. Yes. 
Wendy said, can he stay nice and still? Uh, Dad, stay really still. The ambulance, ambulance is coming to... Yep, we're assist coming, you. darling. Daddy, the ambulance is coming to assist you. Stay really still, please. Yep, okay. Thank you for helping me. You're all right, darling. I'm just glad you're being such a brave girl. It's my pleasure to help you. I'm not going to go anywhere until the ambulance actually gets there. Okay. You are, you've done such a terrific job for your dad. Well done. Funny well funny done. It's his birthday today. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. And Mum's gone to get your sister near the fires and Dad's yeah. been knocked over by a horse and you're being just the brave grown-up girl of the family. Mm -hmm. Aren't you? Mm -hmm. That's okay. Do you go to school? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Do you like it? Yes. Yeah. That's good. All right. How's Dad? Is he, is he still talking? Okay. If you can't he's talk, don't make him. You just let me know what's happening, what you can see. Yeah, he can speak. Good. What he can see? No, you tell me what, what, what's happening there because I can't see it, but you can. Um, All right. Is he still bleeding from the ear? I think it might have stopped. Good. Bleeding. Good. Is it bleeding from the ear? Is it cold there? Kind of. It's yeah. Gas, All cold. right. Do you want to get a blanket to put on Dad? Um, Keep him warm. I think I have a big ass rug, so. Have you got a horse rug you can put on him? Yeah. All right, darling. Just something to keep him nice and warm, because it'd be cold in the stable, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Have you had any emergency calls today? Oh, lots, and you're one of them. <laughs> you're doing a really good job, Lily. You keep talking to Daddy. Yep. Good girl. Um, just yeah. make sure he stays still. Yeah. We don't know any other injuries he's got, so the ambulance officers are going to check him from head to toe okay. and make sure that everything's okay. Thank you. All right. What school do you go to, Lily? Comoroy. Okay. And what year are you in? Six. Year six? So you go to high school next year? Yeah. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah. I'll be a bit sad to leave Tony. Lily, when you look outside, can you see if there's any smoke haze around, you know, from all the fires in Windsor? Um, Does it look really hazy outside? No, not really, because trees are covering most of it. And a bit of a dicky area. This will be something to tell the guys at school, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> and Mum, she'll be proud of you. And your big yeah. sister. Hate to say. Hey? Hate to say. Yeah, of course they will, darling. You've been very proud. You've, you've been brave. You've There's a white Ford view. Yeah, I've told them that the car's in the driveway with the hazard lights on, sweetie. Okay, thank you. Good girl. They're coming down the drive now. Okay. You tell me when they pull up, and then you tell me when they're with Dad. Okay. You stay there with Daddy. They'll come up to you. There's the other coming now. They're coming? Yeah. All right, now I'm going to let you go and you talk to the ambulance officers. All right. And I just want to tell you what a wonderful job you've done for Dad, okay? And thank you for your help. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you go now, darling. You take okay. care, okay? All right, that's all right. My pleasure. Bye, darling. Okay. Lily had been home alone with her father while her mother had gone to pick up her sister from school, which had been evacuated due to bushfires. According to the little girl, her mother's horse had kicked her father to the ground, rendering him unconscious. The NSW bushfires of Greater Sydney had gotten off to an earlier start than usual. For 20 minutes, the emergency dispatcher, Wendy Bryson, guided the little girl on first aid to monitor her father's condition. She instructed on how to help the paramedics locate the property which had been engulfed in smoke by making sure the property was visible to the ambulance. She had opened the gate to their home and asked a neighbor to park their car outside it with their hazard lights on to get the attention of the paramedics. Bryson commended the little girl for her maturity, saying that the year six student had handled the ordeal like an adult and stating that Lily is beyond her years. Lily was awarded the star award at her school by the NSW ambulance for her brave efforts. Her proud father, Ian Talbot, made a full recovery, but had no memory of the accident at all. I have no recollection whatsoever 
but I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Lily. Words can't describe how proud I am. That's it for today. Don't forget to like this video if you found it interesting, and subscribe to join us in the next episode of True 911.